Welcome back to the Social Venture Partners Communications and PR Workshop for Nonprofit Leaders. This is the Section 2 on Building Media Relationships and PR Tools. And these are tools all of you already know, but I'm going to go ahead and just talk a little bit about each of these pieces. And what I want you to do is think through which of these um, is a piece of PR that you struggle with, because I want to talk about um, some of those. Here are your PR tools. You've got media alerts, which are invitations to media, to events, to press conferences, press releases, the old standard, the old, the old guy in the room that nobody reads anymore, nobody writes anymore. You've got editorials and opinion pieces, feature stories, the bread and butter of a news, uh, news and for especially nonprofits. You've got photo releases and video releases or B-roll that you can prepare and have available. Uh, there's a media kit, which is your online media basic information, and then, of course, press conferences. The most uh, interesting thing you can do, press conferences are kind of just press events. Media alert, obviously, is are these things. If, uh, as a manager, you know this, but this can be for a new product release, a new program. It can be something that you release a statement with. Often in nonprofit, this is something that's underutilized to be able to help. Let's say, you know, last week, Nisi, you were talking about um, it being, we were talking about uh, healthcare, um, you know, minority healthcare, I forget what that was, but those kinds of national XYZ days, those are great opportunities for nonprofits to show their expertise in a certain category. And a media alert can be used for that, just to help people understand, you know what you're talking about, and you're really on the ground with a challenge and with a solution in the community. I love, I love media alerts for that kind of thing. Uh, press releases, this is the old man in the room again. It's targeted to those, uh, you know, those reporters that cover your area. It's to send information on a new product. Sometimes this is a good introduction in industry media. Um, press releases are news stories that are put in a specific kind of format. They're not much fun to write. Very few people use them, so they're not really terribly efficient but sometimes it can get your, your door, your foot in the door to some places that you haven't been before. Um, but that's where the press release is now. Editorials, uh, editorials are persuasion. Those are the opinions, the sponsored pieces in the Rivard Report. Those are things that you use to advocate. They're really popular around uh, every other year in the spring when we have our legislators in Austin doing crazy things. And you might want to consider thinking about how you use editorials to support something that you're hearing they're debating in Austin. It's a powerful tool, especially in the nonprofit world to be able to utilize an editorial. So um, as, you, as we get closer, some of our elected officials will give us a little heads up about something they're working on, or maybe you've been trying to get them to put forth a piece. Editorials are a great way to show your support for that. Feature stories, of course, are what we what we love and what editors love and what newspaper people love. Features, tell me a good story. Help me with what I'm going to be doing that's going to be happy today, especially right now when we're all stuck at, at home. Um, it is no surprise to anyone that the you know, good news today, the YouTube series that um, the guy from the office did was so popular. It's features and good stories are out there and you've got them. So, um, Tell us, tell us what you're doing. Tell us a good story that we can share. Stories of impact, evergreen stories. That's the other thing. It may have happened two months ago, but it's still good and people still love to hear that. If you need help with some of those and how to do that, you've got Nisi and I here ready at your service to help you with that story. Photo releases, one of the more fun things to do. We are a visual town. I mean visual. During Fiesta, there's all kinds of cool stuff that you can do and just shoot it out to uh, news. They love running funny things like these dogs. Um, of course, dogs and children get played more than anything else, but photo releases are a wonderful way to connect with uh, a reporter where they don't have to do much besides, oh yeah, that would be a good uh, thing to run in our editorial section about XYZ, or that helps them tell a story that's of something event that's going on. Video releases, that's something that's not, uh, it's not as expensive as you think it is because now we have these awesome little things called our phones that you can take video with and it's a good enough quality that you can run those on um, television. 
I'm going to show you a wildlife clip and you're going to say, yeah, yeah, Becky, these were probably shot with, but you're going to get what I mean of some of these. Um, I'm going to show you this because it's just so cute. And if I worked for the zoo, I would have a bazillion of these. Can you see that? Yeah, we can see it. So imagine that you're working with somebody um, who is got a really good visual of a classroom or a really good visual of, um, you know, taking food to an elderly couple. Think about that and the power of that story and how they can use that. Yeah, I love these zoo pictures. You can always get somebody to smile when you're looking at fun things. It's real similar, um, Jordan, it's real similar to what y'all did with your screen, with your, with your new temperature of taking. It's, it's that kind of storytelling that you can do. Um, ABC News has its own segment now. I'm gonna show you a real short clip that they're playing. They are begging nonprofits to send them stuff. And I'm gonna show you a bit of what I found on that. In the midst of the outbreak, so many are trying to make a difference. James Longman, take it away. Hi everyone. There is a lot going on at the moment. Coronavirus kind of feels like it came out of nowhere and now it's affecting every part of our lives. And it is a scary time, but it's often when we face difficulty that we get to witness. So I'm gonna skip up to a segment things. where so I, I know, know he's showing some of, of his guys. Pay you this. this is my friend, Jim. He owns a pub. Core demographic who visit regularly are of course the elderly. So we just started doing deliveries and takeaways, which we have a team of volunteers that are gonna help. Nice one, Jim. Now, we've all seen these extraordinary videos of Italians out on their balconies, singing, playing musical instruments. So I wanted to, to show you some of those. Those are the examples of some things that, that people just shared, you know, that were their video clips off their phone. Uh, all of y'all, did all of you see those video clips of the Italian singing in the middle of the, you know, when they were all locked in their homes? Those kinds of things are really content that came from people like you. They came, uh, you know, from really good stories because we all just want to see, uh, you know, a smiling child or a smiling elderly couple. And those kinds of stories are really worth sharing. Berlin, if you've got some, some stories from the, the new nonprofit that y'all started of women who are modeling their clothes, their new clothes. I mean, that's, that's just beautiful stuff that, that people are looking for, just to give you some ideas. Um, and so hopefully that will give you a little bit. And if you, if you want to, what you do is you tag it at ABC News Live. That's the connection and that's the link to get to the guy who's looking for these good stories. But you can also just um, tag somebody that you know locally to be able to get them to run that or, or send it to them on email and say, hey, I caught this today. I thought you might be interested. It's that kind of thing that people love to be able to show and, and see, especially with your, um, your TV contacts. Anybody have any ideas on something now that you saw some of that of, of what you might, uh, what might be, what you might be able to say? Anybody got any ideas? Absolutely. Um, I don't know if anybody's seen our social media lately, but we are doing a Five Friends campaign. And it was started actually by five high school students who came together and sat there and said they wanted to share the story of St. Vincent de Paul. And they have challenged each other to each get five friends who would donate $25 and also donate food. And it's been really exciting to watch these kids go off. And now it's expanded and some of the high schools are actually taking it on as their service project. And so we definitely are looking right now how we can sit there and share this campaign because it's not just for kids, it's also for everybody. Yeah. To sit there and share the story. That's a great story. Yeah, let me know if you want, if, if you pitched it to anybody or if you want to, I can think of some people I want to. who would love to see that, especially if you've got video or if you've got um, some fun pictures you could share of that. Um, that's a great story. I know that several outlets would love that. Anybody? Yeah, so we definitely will talk, Becky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, call me, call me. Okay, let's uh, keep on going and um, I will go back to my boring email PowerPoints. <laughs> Sorry about that. So Media Kit, if you don't have one, I can help you build this. This is just your online contact information, has your logo and your mission statement. This is boring stuff, but you do need to have it. It's an essential policy. Um, 
I sent you an article earlier today about relationships and public relations and really how that's changed. Um, that article even was in, I think, 2012. But relationships, as we talked about with Bob Rivard, is really how you get stories placed these days. It's really not about who writes a great story. And it's really, unfortunately, not about necessarily the best video clip. It really is about who you know and uh, if you spend some time getting to know some folks. So I would recommend that if, if you want to, I can help you with introductions to reporters or I've got a list that we can go through and maybe you can target people that you want to be introduced to and find out who covers your beat. Um, be sure that you have a really good connection with just, you don't have to have a bunch. It's really better to have two or three you can call all the time instead of sending it out to the 50 people that you have on your list because only 45 of them are not even gonna look at it. You're never gonna get past that headline because they don't know you or they're too busy. But the people who know you are gonna take a look. Um, one of the main reasons that I spent so much time on social media early on was really trying to get to know who the reporters were and what kind of families they have and do they have kids and where did they go to college? Because things like that, when you remember things like that, it matters. Um, it's, it's nice to be able to see a reporter out there and who shows up and you're like, Hey, how's your wife? Or, um, I, I saw that you posted something the other day that was a really good story. Uh, these are ideas on how building relationships. Y'all know these things. You don't have to, you know, you don't need me telling you, but yeah, meet somebody for coffee, invite them for a tour, share something with them, introduce them to somebody that they, that might be a great story. Um, watch what they do, uh, read their stories. Last week, I wrote a note to a couple of, of the Rivard reporters who wrote a really good story. Um, and so I just sent them a note, hey, thanks for doing that. I know that uh, it was a little bit of a risk. It was the story on some of the, the police stuff. And um, both of them responded, hey, thanks for reading that. And so that kind of little thing matters. And so just think about uh, as you build those relationships, who that, who that reporter is and who you want to be able to connect to. Um, I'll be glad to, uh, Valerie, to help you and Verlin to help you with that kind of thing. Um, just for your own entertainment, I wanted to share this video with you um, while I get a drink of water because it's about time for me to get a drink of water. Hi, yeah. Um, hey, I sent your press release over and I'm just wondering um, when you're going to run that and if I can see a copy of the um, article before you send it out. Thank you so much. My number's... Hi, I'm just calling because I just read the article that you ran on the organization and I wanted to see if I could get a correction made. You got one of our quotes wrong, but I also think that you left out one of the most important parts. So it's really important that we get out a correction right away. It's really not the information that I had sent to you in the form that I had sent to you. And oh, I just might remind you that we have spent several thousand dollars on advertising for you in the last few months. So I need to talk to the editor and give me a call back. My number. Uh, yes. Hello. Um, well, this is not the CEO's office. May I ask who's calling before I can put you through? Um, I'm sure. And what is this regarding? Okay, well, we have no comment on that. Yeah, I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. Um, I'm not gonna give you the answer to that question either. Um, no, we have uh, no information on that. We have no plans. No, we're not, we're not gonna do that. Um, as soon as we have a statement ready from our attorneys, we'll just let you know about that. Okay, no, no comment. No, I'm not gonna give you my name, thank you. That's hilarious, Becky. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was cool. So um, just to give you an idea of what not to do, you laugh. I've been asked by bosses to do all of those things. And it's horrifying to, um, to call someone and say, oh, yeah, my boss wanted me to call and ask, ask, ask you to, to, to pull that story because you didn't get it right. That never, ever happens. Um, so I just thought that would be humorous. I figured you guys know that stuff, but uh, it does happen and they do get quotes wrong and they're never gonna change it. So that's just kind of the way it goes. Um, they don't care if you spend advertising with them. In fact, you bring it up, that makes them mad. So y'all probably know these things, but I have been asked by bosses to do all of these things. Okay, so that really closes out this second part 
of the Communications and PR Workshop. The next segment, part three, is about measuring your media and your communications. And I will see you then.